I'm Menno from the Molen, that Bodegraven Holland. So, sort of in the middle of all the major cities. Everybody thinks that Holland is very big, but you can, if you have a car, you can drive one and a half hours and then cross all of the Netherlands. So we're very essential. Uh, they call it the most logistic point in Holland. You can uh, reach any major city in 30 minutes or so. Bodegraven is uh, the, has the biggest cheese stock in the world. Uh, not a lot of people know that, but uh, well, it's more famous for beer, I guess, now. Bodegraven uh, has 18,000 inhabitants and uh, there are 18 churches. That was why we had a very hard start in, uh, in Bodegraven. The first year I tried to sort of um, give everybody the taste they, they like. So make sort of mediocre beers and then I turned around and thought I'm going to make what I like. The old molen. Oh well, we can see that here. It's typical Dutch, isn't it? Like a windmill. It is a 400 year old building. When I started there, uh, there was nothing. There was only a place in the back where we uh, had the brewery and where we had the, the, the tasting proof locale and where we did a restaurant. And then slowly it evolved into what the beer shop is. Then we made a restaurant up front. Now there's a terrace on the side and the modem is completely renovated. So it looks very beautiful. It's government owned. So you can't do anything about it anymore, uh, but it's going to stay like that because they're going to protect it and they'll uh, keep it updated. There was so much question for our beer that we decided to make a newer brewery just 100 meters away from the old one. Uh, we bought an old DIY building. We have a brewery which is made for 25 hectoliters, but it's quite extreme, so you can make very big beers there. And it's made to make two brews a day. And we do now about uh, three brews a week. So that's around 150 hectoliters. It'll translate to something like what, 120 barrels or something. The old place, we had 35 uh, small tanks. We made five hectoliters of beer, but we brewed eight times a week. And then we had a forklift and we drove the tank of beers through the town a mile away and then uh, filled uh, the beer there in an old cheese warehouse. Then it was like 450 hectoliters. It will be around 7,000, I think. We are not aiming for growth on growth on growth on growth. The main thing is beer. We're not in a hurry with our beer. It'll take us at least five weeks to make a beer, any beer. It's not that, that uh, you can make beer a lot faster, like in two weeks, but uh, we don't think that's right. So uh, we'll stick to the old method methods. We do 18 regular beers, and uh, on the side we make a beer new each month if we have tank space and then uh, we have also a barrel aging program where we do lots of stuff uh, all around there. We don't want to be sort of having one beer which is big. No, we want to have all the beers because there's, uh, we think there's a market for a lot of different beers and we w try to people to get to try new beers constantly and we call ourselves like an evolving brewery so we can do a beer now but over a year we we would say we can do it better than that. Well, we have a, a very small beer, which we call uh, Open Top. It means good stuff. That's a bitter style, actually. We really uh, hop that, but then uh, on the warm side. So just before it's cooled, we'll uh, use flowers hops and uh, runs through our R2D2. It's a very small hop bag where it works very good, and you can use it in all of the breweries, so you can put it on a a tank or you can put it behind a whirlpool or whatever. We have a lot of Dutch names who are N or plus. So they're actually sort of sayings in Holland. They mean something. Like here we on this festival we have a beer called Leaf and Late. That that translates also very hard, but it means that when you're married you share all the good things and the bad things. So it's like love and sorrow. I don't know how it's how it is in your language. Uh, other beers like Helen Verdumenis, Mooie Medogeloos, uh, so that's Helen Damnation, Beautiful and Rootless. Well, we do too many styles to name them all. You should sort of figure it out while you're, where you're going. It's nice to have people here try to name what it is and you hear very crazy things. But they'll only get the beer when they pronounce it right. <laughs> I think it's very hard to ask a brewer what his favorite style is. 
that's depending on uh, a lot of things, depending on the weather outside, if I had a fight with my wife in the morning, what kind of music I listened, so it could be uh, an IPA or uh, Imperial Stout. I like Imperial Stouts. There's so much where you can add on or change things that they are all different. So you could do a Belgium style, you could do an English style, you could do an American style, and there's so much in between. Like you can uh, dry up it or you can oak age it. There's so much possibilities, there's uh, so much more than uh, what's going on in wine. When you have my beer here, uh, you're supposed to be able to keep it for a couple of years and then drink it with your friends. That's how we think about that kind of beer. We're so small that a lot of people ask for our beers that we made very small bottles, 18 mils. But the main reason is that we think that you shouldn't drink an imperial stout in pints. Because people will ask that. If you go to the Great Beers Beer Festival, for example, they'll, people will ask you if you want to drink uh, a pint of imperial stout. And I'll think that's crazy. You should just drink it like wine in a small quantity. In Holland they're mostly lager drinkers, like they are in Germany. So they'll always go for a pale, weak beer, and it's very hard to get their thoughts around. But if you'll uh, set a standard, that would be a, a blonde Belgian beer. And if you ever had that, you can turn them around and slowly get them get him looking to different beers. But it's, uh, well, that's, that's a long struggle. What we try to do is, is make the best we can. I think that, that's what we are doing. That means also that, that I'm uh, a big perfectionist because even when people really crave about my beers, I'll still think, well, I can do better than that.